When I recovered consciousness, I was alone, washed up on the riverbank. My head was aching fiercely, and my mouth tasted like a swamp. At first, I thought the music I heard was in my head. Just my luck to wind up in paradise with a migraine. But I followed the sound and discovered a tree house in a nearby clearing. Interwoven vines made up what looked like a drive belt. The contraption consisted of a crude wooden wheel with wooden slats. That vine rope could be useful. It would have been a shame to tamper with the elegant bridge. Perfect for a game of poo sticks. Hello? Anyone home? I'd always wanted a treehouse like that when I was a kid. There was no way of climbing up to the treehouse. It was a pile of damp leaves. It was a pile of damp leaves. The water wheel had been built to provide a natural source of power. The wheel had a rim of roughly beaten iron. A wooden box was connected to the nearby water wheel. It seemed to be working just fine. As I held the fetish to the iron rim of the wheel, a shower of sparks cascaded onto the leaves. The leaves were too damp to burn on their own. It was a length of rope made of twisted and knotted vines. The machine seemed to be pumping air up to the treehouse. The leaves were too damp to burn on their own. It was Ubier's bank statement. The bank statement was just what I needed to kindle the damp leaves. As I held the fetish to the iron rim of the wheel, a shower of sparks cascaded onto the leaves. Quick, man, put out that fire. I've got a sick woman up here. Sorry, Father, but I needed to attract your attention. Who 
are you? And what do you want? My name is Stobart, George Stobart. I'm Father Hubert. I don't suppose you speak French. Huh? Why do you want to know that? I found a young woman with a fever by the river this morning. The poor girl is close to death. And there's nothing I can do for her but pray. I don't understand her, but I think she's speaking French. Hang on. That must be Nico. What are you doing out here in the jungle? God's work. Not quite the destination I had in mind when I set out, but... Well, you know what they say? Mysterious ways and so on. You didn't plan to end up here? No. I was on my way to the miners' camp in the north. I was stuck here when my boat capsized on the river. That's exactly what happened to me. How long have you been here? Eleven years. That's my girlfriend you've got in your treehouse. What's the matter with her? She's been bitten by a venomous river snake. But can't you do something for her? There's a cure, isn't there? I ran out of penicillin and morphine years ago. But the local people speak of a root which they believe will counteract the poison. Where can I find this root? I don't know. But maybe the shaman of the village can tell us. Will you show me the way to the village? Me? Oh, but I can't. Can't? Nico's life depends on it. You're right. Of course, I should, despite my own guilt and shame. But I can't go as a representative of God with a creased collar. A creased collar? You mean you put your personal attire higher than the life of a sick woman? I will not go to that village looking anything but my best. Give me your collar. I'm sure I can find a way to press it. Thank you, my son. In the meantime, I must contemplate my sermon. There was obviously more than a creased collar bothering the priest. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. It was Father Hubert's collar. He wanted me to press it for him. So there I was, hundreds of miles from civilization, doing the housework for a priest. It's a strange world. The vine provided a drive belt to connect the two stones. It was heavy. I guessed that was intentional. The press worked surprisingly well on the collar. Here's your collar, Father. Thank you, George. You probably think it a little odd of me to make such a fuss. Oh, no. If I'd been living in the jungle for 11 years, I'd be completely screwy, too. Screwy? Yes, perhaps I am. Ever since my last visit to that village. Do you want to tell me what happened at the village? I forgot my vows. I let myself be overwhelmed by the beauty of this unspoiled paradise. And in a moment of weakness, animal passion reared its rampant head. You know, you should be writing romantic novels. Did you experience some kind of a physical liaison at the village? Yes, I'm ashamed to admit it, but I found myself doing the monkey dance. I've never heard it called that before. And I didn't want to pry any deeper into Hubert's murky past. Now you've got your collar back, will you take me to the village? I've still not finished my sermon. Look, Father, I still don't know why you're so reluctant to visit that village, and it's none of my business. Whatever the reason, it can't be more important than saving Nico's life. You're right. I must be crazy. We must make haste if we're to reach the village before nightfall.
By the time we reached the village, it was sunset. Hello, boys. Glad to see you're still wearing the underpants. What? <laughs> They're the best Christmas present we ever had, Father. Mine are too tight. Well, we all have our cross to bear. Uh, this is George. He has a request to make. I'm afraid I can't stay. Good luck, George. That's a relief. I never feel comfortable with him about. Me neither. These damn pants keep riding right up my butt. So, what do you want? My girlfriend has been bitten by a snake. So? Everyone in my family has been bitten by snakes. I was bitten by a dormouse once. She's real sick. I hoped your wise man might have medicine. Wise man? You must have the wrong village. Are you going to stand by and let my girlfriend die? Of course not. What do you think we are, savages? We'll start the preparations for a cremation feast. Father Hubert said there was a wise man in the village who could help me. No, there's no one of that description here. Ooh, he must mean the old man, the shaman. I thought he just made up all those stories he tells. I never thought of him as being wise. I'd like to see the shaman, please. You can't just go walking in there and demand to speak to the shaman. Why not? You have to observe the protocol. The shaman demands tribute. Tribute? You mean, like a gift? That's right. The eternal question. What do you give a man who has everything? Give me a clue. What kind of things does your shaman like? Does he have a hobby, a favorite sport? You insult us. The shaman lives on a higher plane. Oh, right. Maybe a book would be more suitable. Or a jigsaw puzzle? Don't you just hate choosing presents for people you don't know? Here, he'll like these biscuits. If you say so. So, is this your first visit to our planet? I am from the same planet as you. I'm from California. Why? We're practically neighbors. He liked the biscuits, especially the black ones. He wants to know if you've any more. I put the Mayan stone in the empty box. Here, I found some more of those biscuits for the shaman. I'll give them to him. What do you do for entertainment here in the jungle? We make documentaries. Me and Tabtik, we've appeared in seven TV films and an article in National Geographic. The shaman wants to talk to you. I hoped he would. Well, it's been nice to talk to you guys. It was the focal point of the village, the communal cooking fire. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Please, sit down. Welcome, George. Thanks. It has long been foretold that a white man would bring the coyote stone to this village. My girlfriend's been bitten by a snake. And you want me to heal her? That's the idea. Can you do it? I'm not sure. My gums aren't what they used to be. Listen, my girlfriend's in a coma. Please, old man, give me the root. What root? I don't suppose this would be any use to you. It sure would. This wax on a stick will change our lives. Uh, what do you want it for? To decorate our bodies for the monkey dance. 
Why is Father Hubert so reluctant to visit the village? I don't know. He used to come here a lot, but then he just stopped. You'd think he'd want to spend some time with his kids. Did you say Father Hubert has kids? Three girls and five boys, by my reckoning. All conceived in the same week at the Feast of the Monkey Dance. Father Hubert told me of a root which could cure the bite of the river snake. Tell there's nothing sacred with these people. That was a secret, known only to members of my tribe. If that root is my chance of saving Nico's life, then I want it. Fast. There is time yet, George Stobart. Time to learn why you were called here. Fine. If I listen to your story, then will you give me the root? The eel travels far, but still returns to the place of his spawning. And look, I'm running a tight schedule, so can you skip the riddles? Many years ago, when the world was young, the great god and king Quetzalcoatl was defeated by trickery and deceit. His enemy Tezcatlipoca took his place as leader and demanded terrible human sacrifices. A group of loyal priests found a way to trap Tezcatlipoca. But his powers were so great, they knew he would not remain trapped forever. His time of incarceration would end with the eclipse which marked the close of the Fifth Age. So the priests fashioned three obsidian stones which contained the power to seal the mirror for all time. But before the stones could be put in place, they were seized by the invading Spanish. But how did they trap Tez, the evil god? They built a pyramid which they told Tezcatlipoca was dedicated to him. At its center, they fashioned a huge mirror of perfectly smooth obsidian. Luring him into the pyramid with praise and flattery, they used sorcery to ensnare him in the mirror. There's an eclipse of the sun due very soon, isn't there? Correct. The eclipse which marks the ending of the Fifth Age will come before the next full moon. Less than two weeks. I didn't really believe that Tez Catlipoca would return, but I figured Karzak's plans were in some way connected. What happened to the stones? They were taken by the Spanish to the coastal town that is now called Guadamonte City. Only one stone reached Spain. The other two fell into the hands of buccaneers. The Jaguar stone was captured by an English captain, El Draco. The Eagle Stone was taken by a pirate called Ketch. The third stone, the Coyote Stone, reached Spain safely. That is the stone in your possession. Tell me more about the Jaguar Stone. Many centuries ago, the port of Cuaramonte was entered by a ship flying Spanish colors. The captain, the man known as El Draco, sent soldiers ashore. Only when the soldiers arrested the mayor did the people realize that they were English privateers. The mayor was held hostage while the soldiers looted and plundered the city. Amongst the treasures they stole was the Jaguar Stone. Where is the Jaguar Stone now? I suppose El Draco took it back to his homeland across the Great Sea. To England? Tell me more about the Eagle Stone. The stone was loaded onto a galleon with many valuable artifacts plundered by the Spanish. But shortly after leaving harbor, a terrible squall blew up and damaged the ship. The ship was intercepted by a bloodthirsty pirate, Captain Ketch. Ketch made short work of overpowering the crew, stealing the treasure, and sinking the Spanish ship. Where's the Eagle Stone now? Nobody knows for sure. Ketch retired from piracy and bought an island in the Caribbean. What do I do when I find the stones? Bring them here to me and I shall prepare you. The stones must be taken to the heart of the pyramid. Only there can they be used to seal the gate by which Tezcatlipoca will return to this world. 
Suppose I was to believe there was anything in your story, other than the rambling delusions of a seriously wacky old man. Suppose I was to swallow it, hook, line, and kitchen sink. What then? Then you would see that the fate of the human race rests upon your shoulders. Do I get anything to help me combat Tezcatlipoca? Like what? Well, a magical weapon? Get real, George. Can you show me the way to the pyramid of Tezcatlipoca? Not until you possess all three stones. Now do I get the root? Here, take it. Make haste if you wish to save the girl's life. The hummingbird sings to me of death to come. Now you're talking in riddles again. Listen, is it okay if I crash here? I've got no chance of finding my way through the jungle in the dark. You're welcome, but you probably won't get much sleep. Tonight's the night of the monkey dance. I left the village at dawn and stumbled back through the jungle in a post-party daze. It was just like sneaking back to my parents' house when I was younger, except Oakland didn't have monkeys or parrots. The shaman thinks you should go visit your kids. So, he told you? Look, Hubert, having a, well, an extended family is nothing to be ashamed of. If I was you, I'd be ashamed of not being there for them. It was that damned monkey dance that led me astray. Yeah. A sight like that must be difficult to forget. I've got the route, Hubert. What are you waiting for? Give it to the gal. Right. Nico, I've brought you this root. Oh. Uh. No way was she going to be able to chew the root. I needed to give her the antidote in a more digestible form. The cone was ideal as a makeshift container. As the liquid was squeezed from the root, it collected in the cone. Look, Hubert, the antidote. Well, what are you waiting for? Give it to the girl, quickly. Nico. Here, drink this. Oh, George, it's horrible. Just swallow it down. Okay, try and rest now, darling. You'll need all your strength when we go after the other two stones. Other stones? What other stones? What have you gotten me into now, Josh Tobart? Well, the patient is sounding more like her old self already. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. And click on that pop-out box for the next video the pirate catch to a remote island in the Caribbean. With the fortune he'd amassed from piracy, he'd retired to a place that was later called Ketch's Landing.